My talk today is on selenium's antagonism to mercury, which means it amalgamates together. It has a high affinity for mercury. And also answer the question, does methyl mercury cause significant harm to fish or human health? I think it's to your question. Um, I'm trying to relate this into the suction dredge arena, so I'll talk about that first. Dr. Del Nemo, a mercury toxicologist, uh, peer reviewed the California Environmental Impact Report for suction dredging for us, and he says the modest recreational dredging in California streams would benefit water quality because a sluice box simulates a natural riffle pool in stretches of a stream. Natural riffle pools increase turbidity. Furthermore, there would be increased oxygenation of the water and sediment, thereby providing more improved habitats for fish and fish food organisms, and creates depressions, temporary pools, and refugia. Do you know what those temporary pools and refugia are? Dredge holes. Dredge holes, exactly. So, um, <clears throat> I had never seen it, I guess I should use this, I have never seen it set uh, compared to natural riffle pools before, but he has done a lot of work, mostly in Florida. No, no, and he's in Colorado now. He's in Colorado, but the, a lot of the research he did uh, was in Florida. Overburden and oxygenated water flowing off the end of a sluice box submerges and mixes below the water surface. This turbulent action breaks the surface tension and the dense materials settle out in a short distance. This is important to know because they say this material floats indefinitely. And you can see here, use this, the material coming out, being sucked up right over here flowing across the sluice box, and all of this breaks the surface tension, and by the time it gets to here, most of the heavies are already out. Right? Mm -hmm. You've all seen that. <clears throat> Oxygenation of sediments by large wood barriers or dredging, and minor diversions or discharges in the case of dredging, ensures to a greater extent that elemental mercury will not methylate to the more highly bioaccumulated form in aquatic biota. That means that when you come across methyl mercury while you're dredging, because of all this oxygenation of the water, it's very unlikely that methyl mercury will change to the form oh, methyl no. mercury. I mean, uh, mercury, elemental mercury. Would you explain to the group uh, what methylate, methylization is, methyl, methylated mercury is? Sure. Um, when elemental mercury with a host of processes, factors involved, and I'll tell you those factors in a little bit, is broken down by uh, bacteria, uh, sulfate-reducing bacteria, it will change the form of the element. Of the element. And so in this case, well, it goes through several species of mercury, but the me methyl mercury is the most toxic form. And that's the one most I'm not concerned about. Does that answer it? Yes, so ma'am. This is what? saying that it's actually good for the environment to do dredging. Yeah. It, it doesn't harm it. It doesn't harm it. Okay. In the methyl, uh, uh, how is that in the water? How is that? Uh, is it a uh, just a... It's a dissolved form. Dissolved okay. form. And, it, and what happens is it's, it's t the mercury, mercury is changed in uh, insects, and the fish eat the insects, and it bioaccumulates up into fish that way. So any mercury I can find in a stream will be elemental mercury, not metal. It, this, the uh, liquid form, the silver, quicksilver, yes. that's elemental mercury. But that's not inert, is it? No. Yeah. You eat it and turn it into methyl. No, okay. no. Yeah, if you process, no. no, if you eat elemental mercury, you'll, it'll just go through your system yeah. and out the other. Yeah. Okay. There's too many factors involved for it to do that in your body. 
Published peer-reviewed articles leave no doubt that, me uh, that mercury contamination in historic mining basins is significant. Presence doesn't mean toxicity. However, the fact remains that most suction dredgers do not see hot spots of mercury. Most reports see only occasional drops of mercury or amalgamated gold, if any. If that's not true, let me know. Say, I got a question. What is amalgamated, yeah, amalgamated gold? Amalgamated gold is mercury that's uh, attached to gold. Okay. It, it's on the molecular basis and they attract each other. It's like a magnet will attract the uh, oh, okay. Humphreys, Fleck, Alpers, Martin Pis Di Pasquale have attempted to quantify effects of small-scale suction dredging on mercury. Although they have added bits of information to the database of known hot spots of mercury, this information cannot be correlated to the effects that suction dredging may have on mercury in the environment. Claudia, would you mention your uh, references on the Yes, bottom. the references to all the material I'm giving you today is at the bottom here. I don't know if you know Rick Humphreys. He's the North, uh, California State North Coast Water Board employee who did the three, in performed a four inch suction dredge study in a mercury hotspot at the confluence of Humbug Creek on the South Yuba, coming into the South Yuba. The most highly contaminated area in California, the purpose was to quantify the ability of a dredge to capture elemental mercury in the sluice box. 98% of the mercury was captured in the sluice box. 98%. 2% fell off the end of the dredge. And his... Uh, Data doesn't really have a mass balance, so you really, I don't know how he got the calculation, but I like the, I like the ending. But they worry about the 2%. To me, if you can take 98% of the mercury out, you're doing the environmental benefit. Uh, this is Dr. Alpers. He did a three inch dredge pilot study showing no impact regarding mercury. This test was done in the same area, at the South, um, uh, South Yuba River and the Humba Creek. Then, after not finding anything in that one, he decided he'd do an 8-inch dredge. So a study was designed to evaluate the true impact of an 8-inch dredge in the same area where Humphreys performed his study. However, BLM refused to allow the study, so they had to redesign it. This is what they redesigned it to. This is their 8-inch dredge study. They dug a hole in sand and gravel in a, in a known hot spot for mercury, filled it with water, sucked it up, and recirculated it right here. This is the study that uh, Dave McCracken, New 49ers, helped on. He was the expert that showed him where the mercury was. And uh, he was told that if he developed this container for them, they would not use this to correlate it to suction dredging. No, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but they did. <laughs> what, what was that? That's Dave's lips right there. Oh, right here? Yeah. Yeah, like that doesn't. That's yeah. Dave McCracken. Their conclusions from this study were formed from obser observations made from enclosed containers under high surface tension. It is of concern that the observations were extrapolated from data gathered in a hot spot to begin with to represent real stream environment where they say mercury would float indefinitely. I know you all have seen it. While panning concentrates, gold floats until the surface tension is broken. That's what a little bit of jet blue is for. That did not happen in that big container that you saw. They recirculated it. Dr. Charles Alpers calculated from the data collected from this recirculation study that an 8-inch dredge could move more material in a year than nature. 
<laughs> really? <clears throat> oh, by the way, he used manufacturers. If you go to the king side, you can see how much a dredge would move if they were just sucking sand through it. Yeah. That's the data he used to calculate that. Thank that you. Apply to the Columbia River also? Excuse me? Does that apply to the Columbia River? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir? What time frame on that eight inch dredge? Um, he did not jot down the time that he did his study. He does not know the rate in which he dredged that material out of that hole and circulated it. It says an 8 inch dredge to move more material in a year than nature. Uh, did you see the 8 inch dredge? Yeah, I, I did. I'm just wondering, <laughs> like you say, he should have had a time frame there so you could say moves that number of yards compared to nature moving the same number of yards in a year or something. Exactly. Like and so, how did he get this number? How did he calculate it? A, compare that to an 8 inch dredge at all. It's not possible. Did he write it down? Did he write what down? Did he just write it down? Did he write what down? This sir? calculation, maybe he just broke the number down. I think he... He basically did. <laughs> 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 this was uh, Dr. Del Nemo again, peer reviewing Dr. Alper's work. This simulation used to address the alleged problem is flawed. By circulating sediment and water from the excavated depression in, in the sand and gravel bar, that is not a simulation. A valid test is to operate a typical dredge. It must be used in the current of a stream, he says along a stream bank, and operated for several hours. I'm, it doesn't have to be along a stream bank, but you get the point. It's not an 8 inch suction dredge study unless you're using an 8 inch suction dredge. So what you're saying is in that study, that study was flawed and designed to be flawed for the purpose of creating an image that is not correct. That's my opinion. He is uh, was consulting with uh, Sierra Fund at the same time he did the study. My understanding that he wanted to do it in the stream and BLM said that he couldn't. Right. BLM said so they had to redesign. So he didn't design it. To Wouldn't at that point, when you're trying to do an eight-inch dredge study, and you cannot use an eight-inch dredge to do it, why would you not just wait until you could use an eight-inch dredge, or give your money back? Don't waste my tax money. 